What's up YouTube, Chris here with Trust 360 and today I'll be showing you guys how to uh, download, install, and set up Xbox 360 Neighborhood for your RGH or JTAG console. Um, now what uh, Neighborhood allows you to do is wirelessly transfer files from your computer to your e Xbox um, via FTP. Um, so this makes you know transferring applications, things like this, a lot easier. And the reason I'm going in and showing you this now is because if you get if you get Xbox 360 Neighborhood set up, um, you'll be able to follow my tutorials in the future a lot better because I will be transferring files with Neighborhood. Um, so that way you'll be able to follow it a lot easier, more step by step, and it will be a lot easier for you in the long run. Um, so first, what you're going to need to do is go ahead and download Power ISO the Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate and the Xbox 360 Neighborhood SDK. Um, once you have all three of those files downloaded, go ahead and have those, you know, those located where you need them to be and then continue with the tutorial from there. Um, so once, like I said, you have all that downloaded, go ahead and boot up Power ISO and then you're going to go ahead and click on mount. Now if you do get an, a message that pops up, it'll say like uh, register, or continue unregistered, things like that. Just go ahead and click continue unregistered. There's no no reason to reg register this at all. What we're using it for, we just need the free version for. So just go ahead and click mount, set number of drives, and then set the number of drives. I would just set it to one drive since that's all we're working with right now and then uh, then you're good to go on that as you can see I already do have one mounted so I'm just gonna unmount that really quick and that that's not showing up there so once you do set the number of drives to one it's gonna ask you to restart your con uh, your computer just go ahead and do so and then uh, once you get back up and your computer restarts go ahead and launch power ISO once again and then click mount image to drive G Just go ahead and click on that and then you're going to go to where you have Visual Studio saved at. As you can see, uh, I've got it here. I've already got it extracted into a folder. And if you don't have this extracted already, just go ahead and go into wherever you saved it at. Right click on the zip archive and then click extract here or extract Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate. Um, so like I said, once you have that extracted, just go ahead and double click into that folder and choose the ISO file and click open. Now if, we're, if we are to go here, it says mount image to drive G and it shows the image that we have mounted and we also have the um, option to unmount. This means it did mount successfully. So just go ahead and minimize Power ISO, go ahead and click on your start menu, go to computer and double click on the CD drive G which is the one that we have mounted. You'll notice that it does have a yellow icon, that's the one that's uh, being used by Power ISO. So just go ahead and click yes when it tells you to run setup and then you'll get this opening screen. Now mine is already installed so mine says change or remove but yours will say install things like that. Just go ahead and click on that follow the uh, complete install process making sure that you do install everything so if it gives you an option between a full install or a custom install make sure you do the full install that way you have all the dependencies that the SDK needs. Um, so once you follow that and you have that installed what you need to go ahead and do just go ahead and close that out you can go to Power ISO. Now that we're done with it, just go ahead and unmount it and then close that out. Now once you have the uh, Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate installed, you're now going to install the SDK. So just go ahead and double click on that setup and then click yes. And this is going to bring you up to the SDK setup. Um, you go ahead and click next. You can read through this, but this is pretty much just telling you how to connect it to the SDK, like your console. I'm showing you how to do that in this tutorial, so there's really no need. So just go ahead and click Next again. Click Next with Full Install chosen, and then it'll begin the installation process. Now this is going to save it into your program files or program files 86, whichever you choose, and uh, that will set it up. Um, once the program is done installing, you'll have this icon over here. Um, Xbox 360 neighborhood and you'll be able to access it from there. Um, mine already is there because mine's already installed. I'm actually installing this over the other files that I already have so um, all we have to do is really wait on that and then we'll be able to um, show you how to set it up from that point forward. So yeah guys I'm going to go ahead and speed this part up that way you don't have to sit here and watch all of this and I'll be back whenever it's finished.
All right, guys, welcome back. As you can see, um, it's just finishing up now. Um, all you gotta do is wait for this uh, last step to finish, and the installation will be complete. Um, so uh, when the fin uh, when it, once it is done, just go ahead and click finish, and then it's gonna create, like I said, this desktop icon, and it's also going to give you uh, release notes on how to download up to date versions of the SDK. Um, but once you do have it installed, you should have this over here. Just double click that, and you should be at this screen now. Now, what I'm going to do, guys, is hop over onto the RGH or JTAG. Make sure yours is booted on, and I'm going to show you guys how to get the IP address of your console a couple of different ways. That way, you can set it up with neighborhood and you know do what you need to do. So, yeah, guys, I'll uh, see you in just a second on the console. Okay guys, now that you have your RGH or JTAG booted up and ready to go, I'm going to show you guys how to get your IP address two different ways. Uh, now to get Xbox 360 SDK uh, working completely, you do need to make sure you are connected to a Wi-Fi or Ethernet connection. Um, to do this, just go over to your network settings and then choose your available networks. As you can see, mine is there, so just go ahead and click on that. And this will be the first way on how to get your IP address. So just go ahead and click Configure Network. And as you can see, our um, IP address is 192.168.10.100. Period 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 this is the local IP address that's assigned by your router um, to certain devices on your network. Um, the last octet, um, which is the last set of digits, determines the identification of the device on your network. Um, the second way to do it is just go ahead and boot up XEX menu and then uh, I'll show you how to do it from there. So I'm going to boot up into XEX menu. Um, if you want to, you can stop watching the tutorial by now because you've already got your IP address and you'll be able to use it. Um, but um, as you can see here, just go and click RB and then click RB again. And if you scroll down, it has the same IP address as before. 192 period 168 period 10 period 100. Um, either, one, either method will work fine um, to get your IP address. So it's really just basically what you want to do. So now that we have our IP address, we're going to switch back over to the computer part of the tutorial, and I'll show you guys what to do next. Alright guys, once you do have the IP address of your console, um, I just showed you how to get that just now, just go and click Add Xbox 360, and you'll get this little prompt here. Just go ahead and click Next. And then I'll add the Xbox 360 name or IP address. Since we got the IP address, we're going to use that. So I believe it was 192 period 168 period 10 period 100 now uh, these are like I said local IP addresses so most of you all will have um, the same IP addresses locally um, uh, most common ones are 192 period 168 or 10 period 0 per period 0 period and then whatever um, it's assigned and um, so it's going to be one of those more than likely uh, sometimes it can change it's just depending on your router so just go ahead and click next and then if it does register that as an IP address and an Xbox 360 console on your network, it'll say, would you like to use that as a default XDK, uh, Xbox development kit? So just go and click yes, and then click finish. As you can see, it says JTAG here, and there's a check mark beside it. This means it is set up successfully. Um, to check if it is set up successfully, just double click on your JTAG. Double click on retail hard drive emulation, which is your hard drive, and as you can see, here's all the files located on my um, RGH or JTAG console. So, yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe if this helped out, and uh, I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.